Hi, this is Sagar Shah and today I'm going to talk to you about my favorite Vishy Anand game. There are so many beautiful games of chess that Anand has played in his career. Uh, it's difficult for many players to pinpoint on that one game which they like very much. But I did that on his 49th birthday and I asked all the grandmasters of Indian chess to tell me their favorite Vishy Anand game. And we did a beautiful article on it. There were nearly uh, 20 odd GMs who replied. And you know, deep within, I had this one favorite game of Anand. Uh, and I was hoping that one of the GMs would say about it. Of course, the, the game which got the most number of uh, mentions was Aronian versus Anand from Tata Steel 2013. Uh, and I recommend you to check out that game. But the game which is my personal favorite is between Ivanchuk and Vishy Anand from Linares 1992 match uh, between these two players. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you which was the other GM who also thought about that game. But before that, I want to say that there is a, a training camp by Anand which is held in Pune on 16th and 17th of February. Uh, it's a training camp of six hours each day on 16th and 17th. And Vishy Anand would be training in that camp. Uh, the question which I have received uh, many from many places is, what is the level uh, that Anand is going to address in this camp? Like, is it for players of 1000 rating, 1200 rating? Is it for 2000 rating? Is it for 2200? And somehow I, I am uh, of that feeling that when Vishy Anand is training or, you know, when he's talking about chess, it doesn't really matter at which level he's talking about because it's like whatever he would say, he's seen it at that highest level and he has tried, tried it in his games and he has been successful against the best in the world. So any thing which he speaks and and by the way Anand uh, measures his words carefully he comes prepared to these camps so anything that he does uh, would be pretty useful that's what I feel now let's just imagine that Anand would be showing this game of his in the camp which is Ivanchuk versus Anand uh, 1992 from Linares which is my favorite game of chess and I would like to show you that the, the Grandmaster who, who had a similar uh, feeling like me and loved this game immensely is none other than Sandeepan Chanda who said, Amid so many brilliant games in such a rich career, Ivanchuk Anand Linares 92 came to my mind first. What is this? Positional understanding, creativity, it made a very strong impression back in the days and it still does. So this is what Chanda said and let's go over the game and try to see these beautiful moments that Anand really took some great decisions here. Now it began with the Sicilian Anand is black. So uh, he plays the classical Sicilian. And Ivanchuk goes bishop to g5 and now e6 was played. <clears throat> Here queen d2, a6, we're not going to delve too much into theory, long castle, h6, bishop e3, knight takes d4, bishop d4, b5. And uh, Anand had mentioned that I had prepared this variation before the match. I can't recall having played it before, so I can I can hardly imagine Ivanchuk preparing this variation deeply. Still, Ivanchuk blitzed his next few moves and in fact the whole game. So f3, queen a5, a3 was played here, e5, bishop e3, this is all standard uh, Sicilian sort of moves. He develops, so you are going to castle here and then get your rooks over on c8 or b8 and try to attack with b4 while white is going to go g4, h4 and attack over here. Now in this position, uh, Vasily played g4 and after the game, Anand had mentioned that h4 seems to be much better in this position. We'll come to it in a bit. 
now g4 rook b8 and now knight jumped to d5 so anand said okay queens are against each other i'll take it queen into d2 and here it was important to take with the rook uh, once you take rook into d2 the position is around even uh, you could think of taking on d5 and moving your bishop back but Ivanchuk thought, you know, this pawn is weak here, so I shouldn't get my pawn to d5. So he took on f6, which was an intermediate move. And here's the question to you. Would you take with the bishop here, with bishop into f6 or g into f6? Okay, I hope that you had a think. Uh, if you haven't, pause the video and try to come back later. In the game, Anand played the move g into f6 and he gave it as a double exclamation mark. And it's truly a beautiful move. Uh, let's just have a look at bishop f6, rook d2. Now d6 is hanging, so you play king d7 and h4. And somehow in this position, white will have a small edge. He can move his bishop out and then double his rooks here. And somehow white's position looks quite favorable. However, after g into f6, rook into d2, now came uh, this brilliant move h5, uh, which is the, the point behind playing g into f6. So if you go back to this position and you think about it, if white would have played h4 and we have the same variation again, takes g takes rook d2, now h5 makes no real sense because there is no lever with the pawn on g4. So that is the reason why h4 would have been better. Now that was quite a deep point and it's not possible to look at so deeply because Ivanchuk had missed this move g into f6 in his calculation. Now h5 is very anti-intuitive because in a way after you take hg, uh, fg, you are giving white an outside passed pawn. So, in a way, it doesn't look like the best move. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, he played rook to g1 here. And uh, Vishy captured, takes. And here, once again, I will ask you to pause the video and to think what would you play here with black. Uh, I hope that you took some time and you were able to understand the core of this position uh, not just that you know the traditional class classical principles that we learn for example you know the pawns are all on dark squares so this is a bad bishop this is a good bishop we should try to exchange the bad bishop so bishop f8 bishop h6 something like that yeah uh, however anand realized that here, although his bishop on e6 is a good bishop and bishop on f1 is not particularly great, he must exchange both of them with each other because the bad bishop on f1 is actually protecting good squares like h3. So after bishop f1, this was a uh, bishop c4, this was a beautiful move by Anand, uh, black is already clearly better because if you take on c4, b takes, you already have threats like rook h3 and c3 coming in. So that's the reason why b3 was played and now bishop takes f1, rook takes f1 and white is just better. Uh, sorry, black is just better now after he got the move rook h3. You know, these pawns are all very, very weak. Although this bishop is bad here, it's protecting these pawns and white has no real target so black can just move his king and get his rook and these all pawns on h2 and g4 are weak uh, when anand played the move bishop to c4 he made a very important comment which says this is in time to stop white getting some sort of a fortress on the king side black's bad bishop will protect his pawns while he exchanges towards connected h and g pawns uh, so <clears throat> After takes takes rook h3, rook e2 was played by Ivanchuk and now Anand continues with his plan. 
uh, g5 was played king e6 and you can see you already have this central mass of pawns next plan is to move the bishop get the pawn to f6 and try for d5 uh, let's see how anand executes it bd2 bishop e7 simple chess bishop e1 f6 bishop g3 and d5 and this is what i love about anand once he gets a good position his play is so very precise and he gets things done and here after king d5 you realize that this bishop is no longer bad it's a nice bishop these two central pawns after king e6 you know f5 f4 they're going to keep moving forward it's going to be very tough here rook f5 was a nice move by uh, ivanchuk his main idea is to take on e5 and then take on e7 so that this bishop attacks the rook on b8 so king c6 was played the the main point being king e6 is bad because of yeah bishop into e5 and now the rook is hanging so you must take uh, here and if you take then you lose the bishop so rook e8 is one possibility but now you have rook f6 bishop f6 bishop takes and this should be at least equal so rook f5 uh, king c6 was played rook e f2 uh, which was an incorrect move here rook f3 would have been nice because after rook at 7 check king goes back and the king is too far away from coming to e6 and this would have been tougher technical task uh, but ivanchuk went uh, here rook e f2 and after rook h6 king came back on e6 first of all here you can see all these little tricks don't really work with anand because here rook c6 is a threat so anand first plays rook c8 then gets his king and slowly and steadily gets his pieces nicely into the position once again you will see how he's alert like if rook d1 uh, bishop f2 takes takes here there is c3 and somehow white is surviving so first he goes rook c c7 now comes in and e4 this was a nice little trick because if you take rook into e4 as in the game then after bishop e5 there is a mate here, there is a threat of king f5 and this rook and this rook both will be attacked. So he took and after this c2 is falling, f2 is hanging, uh, white resigned the game. So this was a beautiful game by Vishy Anand. I would like to bring to your notice these critical moments where after knight into f6, he took g into f6 back so that he can play h5 he he knows that he is in time you know he knows that he can uh, do these things so for example uh, in this position rook g1 was played but if you play bishop e2 i can take take and come in to the position that's the point and also if you do a move like h3 you're just not in time because this is what I would love to put the bishop on g2 now but I have bishop takes g4 so it is all so well timed so beautifully timed h5 and now comes this brilliant little move uh, bishop to c4 this is I think class apart because now he could enter then bring his king over then play the move f6 and d5 get these central passers and at the end both the rooks were working beautifully with the central pawns and the king you can see these pieces and black was able to win the game so this is my favorite anand game and what i imagine is that in the workshop in the workshop on 16th and 17th what the organizers have said uh, which is done in pyc hindu gymkhana that anand will be going through various phases in his chess career so when he was 16, uh, how would he be playing? He was nearing the GM title. When he was 18, he became the world junior champion. What was his phase then? Then he was going close to the uh, to becoming a world-class player. Then he challenged Kasparov. 
after that he became the world champion and now he is one of the best players in the world at this age of 49 so all these are different phases and how does Anand keep himself at the top of his game in each of these phases? what did he do whose games did he study which were the best games he played this is ideally the thing which they would be covering and now even if the material is aimed at say a player of say 2000 rating but if you are say 2200 you will still learn from it or if it's aimed at a player of 1600 level and your level is 1700 you will still learn from this because the person who's speaking is Anand and he, he always when he talks there's some logic behind what he's trying to say if you can understand that you're bound to take back something home so that's my basic idea and I just showed you uh, my favorite game of Vishy Anand. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please let me know in the comments section below. Thank you.